Hey, what's up guys? In this video, I want to talk all about maps. Not those maps, closure maps. So let's get started. I'm cool again. Cool, so first off, I've got pretty much a blank project. I have a devs.edn file. Inside of that, there's a blank map. I have a source folder. And inside of that, I have a maps.clj file. And I'm just going to start a project repl with culver and use devs.edn. Once that's started up, I'm just going to test it out by evaluating the namespace and then by running plus one one. Cool, and everything is working. Nice. So first off, maps enclosure. They are probably the most common data structure that you will use. What they are is essentially just a key value store. So I associate this value with this key and the lookup is insanely fast and using them is actually really cool and really easy. And this video is going to cover all about how you can use maps. So first off, let's look at creating a map. So we can use the hash map function and this takes a series of key values. So let's say we had the key of name and the value of Scarface and we evaluate this. We see we get a map back. We have the key of name and the value of Scarface. Let's add another key value. So let's say we have the key of rating and a value of 10 and we evaluate this. Now we have another key value added. Generally, you won't use the hash map function you would actually just create a map like so using the shorthand and you just need the curly braces. And now we have a map. You also probably won't use strings as the keys in your map. You'll use keywords. And there's a reason for that. And I'll show you that later. But let's make these keywords. Keywords are just, you'll just notice them because they have the colon in front of them. So now if we evaluate this, we have a map with keyword keys. Let's actually associate this to a variable. So we're going to define a variable here called movie. And if we evaluate this, we have our movie. So now let's try and fetch data from this map. So there's a lot of ways to do that. The first way we can do is by using get and get takes in a map and then it takes in the key that we want to get the value for. So let's say name. And if we do this, we get the value associated with name in our map. If there wasn't a value, like let's say we wanted the actors and there's no value, it'll return null. If we wanted to return a default value, we can just add another argument here and evaluate this. And instead of returning null, it will now return a blank vector. And we can put whatever we want in this. Cool. And that's how get works. But we can also use the map itself as a function. So if we pass through the map here, let's say we wanted to get the name from this map, we can just do that and it'll give us our name. If the value didn't exist, it'll return null. Not only can we use the map as a function, but we can also use the keyword as a function. So generally how I would do it is I would use the keyword and then pass through the map second. Cool. And again, if you wanted a default value, you can just add one to the end. So yeah, if name didn't exist, yeah, we get a blank vector. If name one doesn't exist, we'll get a blank vector. Now let's look at adding data to our map. So to add data to a map, we just use the search function and then we can pass through our map and then more key values. So let's say we do want to add an actors key. We want to pass through actors Al Pacino. Now we'll have our map with a new actors key added. So we can actually add multiple key values here. So let's say we wanted to add a release date and make that 1980. I don't know the actual release date. Cool. Then we see we've added two key value pairs to our map. If we wanted to remove data from the map, it's easy also. We can just go to dissociate, pass through our map, and then let's say we want to dissociate name. Now we get our map without name. Also on that point, even though we associated new key value pairs here, because closure is immutable, we'll still have our original movie. So if we wanted to use this updated value of movie, we can either create an atom or assign it to a new variable. With dissociate, we can dissociate multiple keywords. So let's say we want to dissociate name and rating, we'll get a blank map back. Now let's say we wanted to merge maps together. Let's put this data into another map. I'm gonna call it movie info and evaluate that. Now let's say I wanted to add movie info into our movie map. It's gonna be super easy, barely an inconvenience. We can just go merge and use our two maps as arguments. So movie and then movie info. If we evaluate this, we'll have those two maps merged together. One thing though, is that let's say we had a name value here and let's just say it's whatever. And we evaluate, well, let's evaluate this. And then 
merge again, we can see that movie info's name won out. So if maps have the same key, the value of the last key in the last map will win out. Let's just get rid of this here. So there's another way we can merge maps together and that's by using merge with. So merge with is a function and what it does is it takes another function. I'm just going to use plus function for now. And what merge with will do is it'll apply the function that we pass it to the values in our maps that have the same key. So if we had a map like this with the key of A and the value of one and another map with the key of B and the value of two and we evaluated this, these two maps will just be merged together and nothing will happen. But if we change B to A now, so now these two maps have the same key, now plus is going to be applied to their values. And if we wanted to, we could provide our own function here to do what we wanted. So we'll have value one and value two. And let's say we wanted to combine them as a string. So we could go string val one val two. Yep, now we get our key with the value of one, two. That's a pretty bad example because we could actually just still pass through the string function here and it will do the same thing. But yeah, you get the point there. So another way we can actually create maps is by using zip map. So zip map is awesome. So let's write the function zip map. Zip map will create a map from two lists. So let's pass in two vectors and I'm just gonna put strings in them. One hey, one there. And now check this. Now we'll have a new map where the first vector is the keys and the second vector is the values. So that's pretty cool. So we can actually add true and false. And now true will be a key and false will be its value. Pretty cool. If we wanted to get keys from a map, that's also super easy. We just use the keys function and we can pass through our map. So I'm passing through the movie map and we'll get our keys of name and rating. If we wanted to get the values, we can just use the vals function, pass through our map, and then we'll get our values in the list. So if we wanted to rebuild this map with zip map, we could actually go zip map keys movie and then vals movie and it'll recreate our map. So we could actually just switch the keys and the values around. So we can go vals and keys and then that's pretty wild. So you may have a map and the keys might all be strings and you want to transform all those keys into keywords. Well, there's a really easy way to do that. So I'm just going to create a new map here. I'm going to call it user. And let's say user has a name and the name is on the code again. And we just evaluate that map. And let's say we wanted this key to be a keyword. Well, what we can do is we can use from a library. So if we go back to our namespace and we require and we want to require from closure.walk the function so we use referrer and it's keywordized keys so if we evaluate this i've got a whole um, tutorial on this require i'll link it up above so now if we run that on user so keywordized keys on our user map now you can see that name has become a keyword so what we can do now is we can go name and it will give us the value. Pretty cool. Pretty, 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 pretty good. So sometimes you might have the other issue where you might want to convert a keyword into a string and that's also pretty easy. We just run the name function on our keyword. So let's say movie name and this will change movie name into a string. And if it's namespaced like so, we can still run name and we'll return name. And if we run namespace on here, it'll return the namespace that it's in. So we can combine those together. Space, oh, let's do string namespace and let's say forward slash name and then we'll get our namespace and our name. So potentially you might want to sort the keys in your app and you can do that by creating a sorted map. So if we use sorted map, it takes key values. So let's say the first key is Z and we'll give it the value Z and the second key it says A and we'll give it the value Arnold. Cool. So now what it's done is it's put A before Z because it sorted it. So if we wanted to sort the keys of a map um, using our own function, we can do that using sorted map by. So sorted map by. And this takes in a function and this function will give us the keys. So we'll say key one and 
key two, and it's supplied to some keys. So I'm just going to say one, and it will have the value of one, and another key two, and it will have the value of two. And then sorted map by takes a comparator function. And the way a comparator function works is if we turn a negative number, then the item moves up in the list. If we turn a positive number, then the item moves down in the list. And if we turn a zero, then the item stays in the same position. So to show you how that works is if we turn negative one here, then two will be before one. If we turn one, then one will be before two. So let's say we want to sort this map by shortest keyword to longest keyword. We can do that. So let's go A, 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 and we'll have another one, A, A, A. So three, and that will have value three. So we can just say greater than, and we'll take the length, and we'll take the count of our key one and the count of key two. So if we evaluate this, okay, so I did the other way around. But now we sorted the keywords with the longest keyword first and the shortest keyword last. So if we change this to less than, it'll reverse that order. So the last thing I wanna go over is the structuring the keys of a map into a function. And that's another reason why it's good to use keywords. So let's say we had a function print movie rating and that takes in a movie. We could say print line, we could get the name of our movie was rated and then we get the rating from our movie out of 10 and now we evaluate that function and we run it with our movie. So print movie rating with our movie. You can see Scarface was rated 10 out of 10. You may not want to do this everywhere. So what we could do is we could pass through a map here and give it a key of keys and then pass through the keys that we wanted to structure. So let's say we want to pass through name and rating here. Now what we'll be able to do is we'll be able to replace this with name and this with rating. And if we evaluate this, this will still work. If we still wanted to use the whole map, we could. We could just pass through another keyword here, as, and give it the value of M. And now M will be our original map. So we can actually just print line M here because I'm not very creative today. And if we evaluate this, Cool, we can see that M is still equal to our map. I feel like I've covered a lot about maps in this video. If you have anything more that you'd like to add, please add it in the comments. As always, thanks for watching guys. See you in the next one. Bye.